Hello third grade, so today we are going to start this original cityscape. So remember that our learning objectives for today are to create an original cityscape and then to paint lines and fill in shapes with even color using tempera. So we're going to use tempera paint to color in and paint in our cityscape. But the first thing we need to do is draw our cityscape. So you're going to start with a large white piece of paper. You're going to need a ruler and a pencil and eraser. And you're going to start at the bottom and draw some buildings. I want a variety of size buildings, tall buildings, buildings with pitched roofs, buildings with flat roofs. You can put buildings behind other buildings. Okay, <clears throat> so once you have your buildings drawn, um, what I'd like you to do is go back and darken up those lines a little bit, make them a little bit wider so that um, you can clearly see the difference between your buildings and the sky. Because we're going to add some vertical and horizontal lines and patterns and sometimes you start to lose what is a building and what is the sky. Okay, so I started to kind of do the whole building, but then I decided just to do the rooftop is good enough. So I'm going to start with each individual building, and I'm going to draw one or two vertical lines, and then I'm going to draw some horizontal lines. And maybe I make the horizontal lines go across all the way, or maybe I just make them run into <clears throat> a line. So here I have a line going from the edge of the building all the way off the paper, or I can start at a line and end off the paper, or I could start at the edge of the building and end at another line. But I don't have any lines that just kind of stop in, in the middle of space. So that I make clear rectangles and shapes. And I would like you to try to make these <clears throat> as vertical and horizontal as possible so that you don't have any too many of these looking a bit diagonal and crooked. And I try to make sure that these lines don't, that each building has separate set of lines so that these lines don't run into these lines in this building so they don't connect so that you can clearly see the difference between each building. That will help you later when it's time to start painting. Okay, and then you need to add some lines in your sky. So I'm going to start with vertical lines. And I might have big wide spaces and some smaller skinnier spaces. And now when I go to add my horizontal lines going across, I can start at the edge of the paper and stop when I get to a line. This way it doesn't matter if my ruler will reach or not because my ruler won't reach. This way when I do my lines this way it doesn't matter if my ruler will reach because I'm not drawing a continuous line from this edge of my paper all the way over. And I forgot to write my name. That's important. We need to write our name and the day we have our day A, day B, day C. And so now you're ready to paint. You're going to need a large black placemat to go under your work. And you're going to start with the sky. So you need a water basin. You need a sponge to dry your paintbrush off with and a paintbrush. And then you are going to choose two colors for your sky and white. And I want you to choose two colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So, or next to each other in the rainbow. So if you choose green, you would either choose green and yellow or green and blue because the color the rainbow is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. That's the order. So, depending on what color you choose, you would either choose the color on the one side of it or the other. <clears throat> so, I am choosing red and violet. So if you think about the, the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Violet ends the rainbow, red begins it. So if, you, if we put it in a circle, they would be touching. And so I pumped out some red and some violet and then some white. And you're going to color your sky. You can first just take a dry paintbrush. You don't need it wet. And just paint in a few boxes with the color as is and you want to paint nice and neat. Fill in the space, solid color. Don't leave any white poking through. And try to paint up to the edge of the shape. <clears throat> I try to make sure that my red doesn't touch another red, so I skip around. 
Now remember, this is one of our learning objectives. <clears throat> to paint lines and fill in shapes with even color using tempera. So I'm looking to see that you can fill in these shapes that you've made with equal, even paint. That you don't have it real clumpy, that you didn't leave any white spaces, that you don't have it thin in one space in one space it's on super thick and clumpy so what I like to do when I want to fill in a shape is I outline the shape first go right along the edge of the shape and then I just fill in <coughs> quickly the re remaining of the shape okay so there's my red so now I think what I'm going to do is mix some red with my white and do a couple of tints whenever you add white to a color you create a tint so I'm going to take some of this red, mix it in with my white, and I probably got way too much paint here. So you probably only need a half a pump of each color. And I'm going to paint this color, this tint, in a couple of spaces. And see again how I paint along the edge of the shape, and then I fill in the inside. Getting these corners can get a little tricky, so just do the best that you can. And so now I'm filling in the inside of that. Now you can always make more than one tint. So this is a pink color, it's kind of a dark pink. I could just add more white to this pink color and get a lighter tint. So depending on how much white you add to your color or how much color you add to your white will give you different values of a color. So you can see this pink is much lighter than the first pink that I used. So again, filling in solid shapes. So I go along the edge of the shape with my paintbrush if I want a small, delicate area, then I keep my paintbrush up on its tiptoes like this. If I have um, a wider area to fill in, then I can press down with my paintbrush and get a wider line. I always keep my paintbrush up on its tiptoes when I'm doing the corner of a shape. And then now I'm just going to fill in that solid shape. Okay, so this is probably enough painted with the red. So remember, I want to use some of my other color. And by us choosing two colors, you can mix the two colors together and get a third color. So I'm going to take my paintbrush, use the teeth at the bottom of the water basin to get it completely clean. So I rub it back and forth. I need to dry it off on the sponge. When I pull it across the sponge like this, if paint comes out of it, then I know it's not rinsed off all the way and I put it back in the water. But I've done a good job of rinsing this paintbrush off. If you get any paint on the metal part, you can just kind of uh, spin it around on the sponge to get that off. So remember I said you can mix the two colors together. So I can mix the red and the violet together to get a red-violet color that I could paint in some of the, the sky too. Okay, and so this square isn't completely colored in, so I'm going to come through. Oops, I've got a little bit. Come through. I'm not going to try to press down too hard so that I can get those little areas there. Okay, and then I have little corners to get. <clears throat> okay, and then I could add some white to this color and get a different tint. So I'm going to take some of this white here, mix it around in the red violet, trying not to add any more red or violet to this color, and paint this in. Now when your paintbrush gets filled with paint, it gets really thick. It kind of blows up like a balloon almost, so you need to be careful. If it's too thick to work with, you can always pull it across the edge of your plate and um, get some of that paint out of there. So now I'm ready to rinse this paintbrush off, and now I'm going to use purple, and purple mixed with white, make another tint of a new color for these rest of these boxes. Now by having this dark outline of the top of my city, I can clearly see what are my buildings, what's my city, and what's the sky. So I don't accidentally paint the top of a building as part of my sky color. Because we don't want our buildings to be the same color as our sky, so that we can clearly tell the difference. Okay, and then I have one box left over for my sky, so I'm going to add a little bit of white to my purple to create a tint. Okay, so now I'm finished, and I used two colors, red and violet, which are next to each other on the color wheel, and then I did some tents. On this paper, I did turquoise, blue and turquoise together, 
and I added some tints and I got the sky color that way. And then I have one here where I used yellow and orange. They're next to each other on the color wheel and some tints and shades for the sky there. So now I need to rinse my paintbrush off. I'll need to rinse this plate off. So you'll put it under the water and I'll show you how to run it under the water and rinse all this paint off. See, this is way too much paint. You should really only get a half a pump of each color because this is so wasteful. I'm gonna be washing all this extra paint down the sink. And what I did was a pump of each color. I did a full pump. You should only do a half a pump. Now for the buildings, you're going to do each building with one color plus white. So you're gonna mix a variety of tints and shades. So I'm gonna start with red and blue. Oops, you know what? I can't use red on my buildings because I already have it in the sky. So that's a mistake. I shouldn't have pumped red. So hopefully you don't make that mistake. So I'm gonna start with this building since I'm right-handed and work my way across. And I'm gonna start with blue. And you're just going to take the color as is and paint some of the squares blue, just like I did in the sky. In the sky, I painted some uh, some red and some purple, just that color as is, and then I mixed white with the red and painted a couple. Then I mixed a little bit more white with that pinkish color, that tint, and made a new tint and colored that. And then with the purple, I mixed a tint to color that in. So you're gonna mix with each building, you're gonna paint the color as is, the one color, and then you're gonna mix at least maybe two tints of that color. And again, you gotta color in the shape nice and solid. I just did a really bad job of coloring in this rectangle. So I went way outside the edge and now it's all wonky on the side there. So I'm gonna have to go back when I paint next to this square, this rectangle here, I'm gonna have to try and straighten up that edge there. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix up some tints. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this blue and get a, a darker tint because it has less white in it. And I'm going to paint some of my boxes with this darker tint, which is still a light blue, but not as light as it could be because it has less white in it. If you go outside the edges of your building into the sky a little bit, that's okay. You just have to do the best you can. We're going to come back with some black paint and try to camouflage some of those edges to make them a little bit more crisp and clean. Okay, and so now I'm going to make an even lighter tint with more white for the remaining rectangles in this building. Oh, you know what? These two are gonna touch each other. So I need to make a decision here. Do I wanna try and make another tent? I could, because I still have some white left over. Or do I just wanna paint this whole space here this one color? And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this whole space here. These two rectangles I'll just make, or these two shapes I'll just make into one big shape. Now, Look, I got some red on my paintbrush from the, the, the color red up here in the sky that's not quite dry. So if that happens to you, just be real careful about it and try not to mix it in with the color that you're painting. Okay, so that's one building. So I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off. I'm gonna dry my paintbrush off. Make sure it's nice and clean. I'm gonna move to my next building. So I have a plate here with some green and white, some orange and white, some yellow and white, and some magenta and white. And again, just like before, you're gonna paint the color as is in a few boxes, and then you'll add and mix your tints. Okay, and I have three, four boxes left over, so I'm gonna mix one final tint, a lighter tint with some of this white for those remaining boxes. Now notice how I try to keep the magenta and white together in its little space so I don't mix it up with all the other colors. We're never going to mix all these colors together. We're always going to just mix one color with white. Please notice I did not rinse my paintbrush off between each of these colors. I only rinsed my paintbrush off when I was done with the building. When I was done with blue, I rinsed my paintbrush off when I moved to magenta. When I was done with magenta, I rinsed my paintbrush off when I moved to yellow. When I was done with yellow, I rinsed my paintbrush off when I moved to orange. When I was done with the orange, I rinsed my paintbrush off, I dried it off, and now I'm going to do my final building, which is green. You do not need to rinse your paintbrush off when you're mixing white in with your color.
Okay, so now I'm officially finished painting. Look at all this paint I have left. This was incredibly wasteful. Again, half a pump of each color. Half a pump of green. I should have taken a half a pump of green, half a pump of white. Half a pump of orange, half a pump of white. That was just way too much paint. It's so incredibly wasteful. So now, this is finished for now. We have to let this dry. So this will go on the drying rack. And on the last day, you're going to get your dried painting back. You're going to get yourself a square tipped paintbrush and some black paint. And what I want you to do is go on over the outline of each of your buildings. So you're going to use this square tipped paintbrush and it's going to make a nice wide line for you. And I want you to paint a fairly dark black outline. So you might have to go back and add some paint on top of your paint because as your paint comes off your paintbrush, you'll see See how it goes away and it almost looks grayish or brownish? So you have to kind of go back over the top of that with some more black paint to make it just a little bit darker. Now you're gonna go through and you're gonna add doors and windows to each of your buildings. And I want your windows to be nice and straight. So if you're worried about making a mistake, you might wanna go through with your pencil and draw your windows first. So I'm gonna do like a semicircle window there, real light with your pencil so that you can just trace over it. I'm gonna do a skinny rectangle window there, and I'm gonna do a second window next to it that runs off the edge of the paper. Um, I'm gonna do another skinny window underneath, and another one over here, and then I need to add a door. Okay, and you're gonna go through and draw those first if you're worried about making a mistake, because with paint, you can't erase. By drawing them, you can just trace over the top of your pencil lines with the paint, or paint right over the top of them. And they should not be crooked and sloppy, so take your time. This, is, this part's really gonna stand out and what catches the um, viewer's eye. Everybody who looks at your artwork, that's what they're gonna see first is this black line. So you want it to be nice and neat, and you don't want it to be sloppy. Now with the doors, you can add a little doorknob if you want. I usually take my paintbrush and instead of holding it like this, I turn it on its side and do a, a little slash there for the doorknob. But you can do it any way you want. Notice how my windows are lined up side to side and up and down. I don't have one here and then one over here that's crooked. They all line up in neat rows and columns. All the same size. I don't have one that's a lot smaller than another window. So that's why you should probably draw your windows first. That way you don't make that mistake when you're painting. Buildings that are on the edge of your paper, you might only see part of something. So you can see I only see part of my windows here. Here I only see part of my door. I'm gonna add part of another row of windows. And finally, the last thing you're going to do is you can add something to your sky. If you want to add clouds in the sky, if you want to add a sun, a circle sun, or some birds in the sky, you can. Um, but you're going to add those neatly with the black paint too. And I don't want any circles with stick suns. Um, you could do a moon. If you did a nighttime scene, you could do a moon in the sky and do a semicircle or a crescent moon. Um, and again, you might want to paint, draw these with your pencil first before you just jump in and paint them. And that way you're less likely to make a mistake. You could add little V birds if you want, but make sure they're nice and neat, filling in the sky as much as you'd like. Okay. And then you're going to put this on the drying rack and you'll rinse out your paintbrush and um, your black paint. Good job, third grade.